Hi, my name is Lindsay Watkins, and I am a PhD candidate at George Mason University in the field of special education. I'm here today with the authors of Special Education Research. Um, the purpose of their book is to provide an overview of research methodology for beginning researchers and classroom educators who care about intervention effects in the field of special education. This is actually the first in a series of videos. Uh, each, the contributors for each chapter will be interviewed um, to give an overview of the book and the contents of each chapter. In this first intro video, I have Brittany Hott, Corey Peltier, and Rick Brigham. I'm gonna introduce them, tell you a little bit about their backgrounds, and then let them talk a little bit about uh, the purpose of writing their book and what we'll find there. Uh, Brittany Hott is currently an associate professor in the Department of Educational Psychology at the University of Oklahoma. Prior to her career in higher education, she served as a middle and high school teacher in rural districts, uh, as a special education coordinator for youth committed to state care, and as a school and district administrator. Uh, she is currently president of the Council for Learning Disabilities, a member of the American Council for Rural Special Education Executive Board, and an associate editor for Rural Special Education Quarterly. Corey Peltier is currently an assistant professor in the Department of Educational Psychology at the University of Oklahoma. This is currently his second year at OU. Prior to his career in higher education, he was a general education teacher in fifth grade for three years. Uh, currently on the Council for Learning Disabilities Research Committee, on the Council for Exceptional Children Division for Research Communication Committee, and on the Editorial Board for Remedial and Special Education, Assessment for Effective Intervention, and School Psychology Review. Rick Brigham is currently a special education, uh, a professor of special education at the Keller Institute for the Study of Human Disability at George Mason University. Prior to his career in higher education, he taught classes for students with emotional and behavioral disorders at middle and high school levels, and also taught third and sixth grade general education classes. Uh, Rick Brigham was currently, or was previously a two-term editor of behavioral disorders and associate editor of exceptional children. Um, so to start off, Brittany, what are some of the challenges of researching in the field of special education? Well, in special education, we work with individuals who have disabilities. We work with children and adults um, with, with a wide range of challenges and gifts. And we work in applied settings, meaning we don't have labs where we can control everything. We have fire drills, we have changes in, in um, staff, we have children who move from district to district. We're now in a pandemic where children are receiving online education, which has shifted the way we're conducting research. And so all of these, these pieces come into a, um, play when we're designing studies. Um, we also work uh, with schools, and so we have to develop meaningful partnerships that help us navigate challenges when they come up. Um, and, and finally, we work in a field that's evolving. Special education is still a relatively young field. For example, we're trying to figure out how to best classify learning disabilities. Um, we may conduct a larger randomized control trial, for example, and we've got to figure out which kids um, have reading disabilities or math disabilities, because that's often not part of the eligibility process. And we have to balance collecting assessment data with um, students' time, because when we're conducting studies, we are interrupting children's education, or we're evaluating the education that we're receiving. And on that note, in an applied setting, we can't randomly assign students to classrooms or schools. We're working in intact, realistic situations in routine circumstances, and, and we have to, to work effectively within um, the situations that we're giving. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Corey, Brittany talked about special education being a young discipline still, um, and there's often a lot of overlap with different fields. How would you situate special education research in terms of psychology, social science, uh, education? Yeah, so I think one of the things to remember is 
we still run into this issue of being very siloed, right? So we'll look at research within special education, but we'll rarely read outside our discipline, and that can really stagnate growth. Um, the science of reading movement that we see all over the news, Twitter, all over the place, we've seen, they pulled research from psychology, research from medicine, research from social sciences, research from special ed, and that's really just had a huge impact on policy and then even educators thinking, what is my practice? What am I doing every day to help these students learn to read? And I think we just, I hope that we can continue to grow. A science of math movement would be amazing. Um, and just trying to really think through making sure we are reading across disciplines so that we are um, basically gaining knowledge at a more rapid pace. Um, with so many uh, different disciplines coming into play here in the field of special ed research, um, Rick, did you treat all methodologies equally in this book? Uh, did you choose um, to give weight to one more than the other based on where special ed research is situated? We worked really hard, I think, to make uh, equal treatment of the, of the different methodologies. Uh, all three of us are united in the idea that it's not the methodology that's important, it's the question that's important. And when you have your question refined, your methodology becomes more clear, at least should become more clear about optimal ways of addressing it. Uh, if you take, you know, if we, if we make artificial distinctions between different types of methodologies, you know, the qualitative versus quantitative, it would probably appear that there are more quantitative methodology chapters in the book, but I think that's because there's a uh, longer history of that and uh, not because of any preference on our part one way or the other. Um, thank you. And I know you all have spoken a lot about um, your collaboration and um, thought process in, in uh, putting this work together. Um, you know, uh, speaking to that, are there any special considerations, and this question is to the three of you, uh, any special considerations regarding ethics, research ethics in the field of special education? Ethics are essential throughout the research process. When you're designing a study, as you're going through a study, and as you're disseminating findings. We um, often work with children who are under the age of 18, who are considered a, a vulnerable population. We have to work in collaboration with our institutional review boards to make sure that we are doing everything we can to protect their rights and their families' rights as you're designing a study. When you're in a study, for example, a child may say, I'm uncomfortable being videotaped. Well, videotape allows us to, to get really great assessment results, to have inter-rater reliability. Um, but if a five-year-old saying, I'm uncomfortable with this, we have to respect that. Um, and we have to adapt to um, those situations. And as we're disseminating findings, we have a responsibility to use effective measures and we have a responsibility to disseminate effectively. Yes, we may be um, putting preprints out and moving through the open science movement um, and, and making things accessible, but we also have to a professional responsibility to translate to practice. We have to translate for policymakers. We have to make sure that we're creating practitioner articles, infographics, videos that we're serving as consultants to districts and to professional organizations so that research, um, it, we're not using participants. We're actually learning and we are translating those findings for the people that matter, for educators and for students. Um, you all uh, spoke in relation to that last question and in your previous responses about many different consumers of special ed research. Um, is there anything that um, you would say to all the different uh, practitioners, um, teachers, parents that, that may be consumers of, of special ed research? One thing that I would say, and I think, it, I, I, I think it's a problem for our, re our field. Uh, Brittany earlier said that we're a young field and we are. And I think we haven't quite decided what we want to be when we grow up. We can't unite on what we want the outcomes of our research to be. And uh, I wish we could. Where we are united is in our agreement that everybody is doing what they think is best for the students that we serve. And 
I, I wish there was a way we would come together better. I considered myself a consumer of research when I was in the classroom because after I received my training, I realized, okay, now I'm ready. They, they got me ready to learn what I needed to do. And it's hard to find enough guidance in the field. And I'd echo back to my other comment about reading across disciplines. It's, I also think it's really important for us to think about disseminating outside of just the world of special education. Our students spend, when you look at the OSEP annual report data, students with disabilities spend a majority of their time in a gen ed environment receiving instruction from general education teachers. So it, it, the onus has to be on us to make sure that we are getting that research base outside of just special education. And that doesn't just go for practitioners, but that goes in back to our institutions of higher education, right? We need to make sure we're communicating with the departments that are preparing general education teachers um, so that we can continue to improve outcomes for kids. It's essential that researchers, regardless of position, are able to have not only the hard methodology skills, knowing how to measure something effectively, how to develop a, a quality research question. You also need the soft skills. You need to understand ethics. You need to understand how something becomes an evidence-based practice. You need to understand how to work with districts and other stakeholders um, in partnerships and effective translation procedures. And so in our field, it's just absolutely essential that we have both hard and soft skills. And we've tried to cover both in our text. We have dedicated chapters to each of those topics. And in addition, program evaluation, which isn't a, a methodology. It's not even really a research. It, it's a means of evaluating effects of programs, but it's essential to our field as well. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, I'm very, very excited about this book. I think it'll be a fantastic resource, not only for methodology classes, but uh, for anyone interested in learning more about the field of research and special education.